If you don't already know, I sell 3D printed fidget slugs on my Etsy store and there are rainbow slugs and candy slugs. All the links will be below and you can use code APRIL10 to get 10% off all of the month of April. So check it out. We're not centered. Can you move a little bit this way? Okay. Is that good? Yeah. So welcome back to another episode of Dear Sadie and P where you guys write a letter to us and we respond to it. So this letter is from L. We're gonna refer to her as L because she didn't want her name to be okay. aired. So she writes, My partner and I have been together six years. I'm 63. We have a 25 year age gap and she also has a nine year old child from a previous relationship. The age difference is something new to me and like Sadie, my partner has always been attracted to older women. We're both totally in love but I'm finding more and more expectations related to the child, her work functions, her parents, etc. I am retired and these feel overwhelming sometimes. I've led a very carefree life with my previous partners. Would you be able to maintain your present relationship with a child? Any advice? She's a new follower of ours. Yeah. She'll, so Welcome. she doesn't know that you have actually a daughter. Okay. But in this case, it's reversed. Mm -hmm. Because she's the older one. Yeah. And the younger one can't, comes with a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. So, any advice? <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, welcome to our channel. And um, yeah, I mean, it can be very tough if you had, uh, like you describe a very carefree life, then uh, at this point you feel like, um, you know, there is more <laughs> to, to your life at the, uh, at the moment. There is more like a, a responsibility. Maybe you feel a responsibility of being part of uh, uh, your partner's uh, child's life. I don't know how old. How old? Do, do, do they say how old the child is? Yeah, nine years old. Oh, nine years old. And it's, you know, quite a, a young age. Definitely quite a young age. Mm -hmm. So, from my perspective, uh, of course, you... Um, if you are so much in love, you know, I guess, you know, you're together for a reason. So, and uh, there is something new in your life. As you said, uh, your life has always been carefree. Now you are basically uh, presented with this challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it is a challenge. Every everything, if we think and hope that uh, everything goes smooth in our life, then it's just not. It's not happening. There is always, always a challenge, and it can be of different kind. I don't know what your partner's expectations are, exactly, but you don't have to feel involved in a way that. Um, you don't want to. You have to be comfortable with your involvement in uh, in uh, your partner's uh, uh, child's life. Mm -hmm. So you you have to be comfortable because that's key. Yeah. Because uh, you have to extend your involvement to the point you feel comfortable. Yeah, it's all about boundaries, right? Yeah, it's interesting because so in our case, it's kind of like reversed. She has a daughter, um, and when we were first starting to get together, her daughter was. Like 14, I think. She was 14. So yes. she was still like... Teenager, teenager. Which is a difficult age. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I was the one who led a very carefree life up until then. In fact, I have in my head that I don't want kids. I never wanted kids. I can barely take care of my own needs. I can't take care of another person's needs. And I knew that from the beginning. Yeah. So we didn't have any expectations on you yeah. when it comes to this. Other than, you know knowing that I have a daughter and I have my own responsibilities towards my daughter. I think boundaries are really important, like you said. Um, yes. For you to feel comfortable in the relationship because it wasn't your choices that made the child happen. It was your partner's choices. So it's really, you know, their responsibility. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can really say, this is how much I want to be involved and this is this is not the role I want to play for this child. Like you don't automatically have to become the second parent to the child, you know, just because you're in a relationship right. with their mom, I right. think. Communicate, communicate openly your true feelings towards mm -hmm. this with your partner and uh, uh, don't get into a defense mode or anything. Just, just be open-hearted and say what's in your heart. Also because it's very important for the child. Uh, it, it's better 
that a child grows up in an in a environment which is uh, where acceptance of whatever it is, because limitations belong to everyone. So the, the hardest part and challenges part on anyone is to accept that these limitations. So it's very important for a child to grow up in an environment of acceptance rather than forcefulness that where you are for and expectations. Uh, so this is maybe and a message and resentment because when there is expectations then there is resentment and uh, it doesn't work and it creates a toxic environment where you don't want the child to grow up. So uh, the best way for you uh, if you love your partner is to be super open-hearted in communicating your feelings and uh, your limitations right because that's the best environment where the child can grow up in yeah that's um, and don't be don't be afraid to say like look i can't i can't be i can't be a parent to the child like i don't i don't have it in me to be like that it, it's better to say it up front than to go through something and then you build up all this resentment and then you get angry and mm -hmm. like it's not that it's not like they can do anything to make the problem go away because the child can't go away you know, but I yeah. want to reverse this on us. Like, imagine yeah. if you were the one who were who was child free, and I was the one who wanted to have a child or like came in with a young child. How would you feel? Because I feel like you're in a part of your life where you're kind of retired from all of that. Yeah. So how would you feel going back into that? Because it is a lot of responsibility, no matter what. Yeah, I must say that uh, it. You it don't feels... even want me to have pets. Yeah, I'm done with that. I mean. I'm... <laughs> I mean, I'm done with that just because I had a child already, so, and uh, it's very difficult. So in a way, it's also different context than this person who wrote to us, than Elle, Elle's context. What can I say? I would be supportive, of course, because I met you and you come with a, with a baggage, right? And uh, um, so I would accept it. Of course, I will tell, yes, I can do this, but I don't feel like doing that. I work very well in an environment where there's no expectations because that's when, that's when I give the most, actually. <laughs> yeah, if there is no expectation, I can give the most because I am my true self. So whenever I feel like doing something, I feel it with, and I do it with love and with uh, um, enthusiasm. But if I'm expected and pushed into a corner, then that does work. So yeah, it's a tough situation. It's a, it's a tough. It would be a tough situation, yes. But um, if this impacts, let's assume that this was really impacting the perspective I had, you know, of a life with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like saying, okay, I was dreaming of. Uh, touring the world, going around, traveling everywhere. Mm -hmm. And this child is, you know, keeping you mm -hmm. tied to a different lifestyle. Then that, that means that I will suffer. I will resent you just for the situation you're in. Mm -hmm. It's not so, you know, we think about it, being together in a relationship. And maybe I wouldn't choose this relationship. I wouldn't yeah. choose being with you. Because I know this from the beginning, so I can choose. You are in this situation. I don't know if it's a choice though, because they've already been together for a lot of years, you know. For a lot of years. So there's already that connection. I don't think she wants to break it off. I think she exactly. Wants to... But this is like a, they've been together for six years, and the child is nine. So that means that they met when Elle's partner's child was three. Mm -hmm. So um, so she knows already. She, it's not that she had a child after they met. Sure. But she talks about expectations, uh, so maybe that's a key. That's, yeah, that's a key. Where they can work out. Yes. Some better boundaries. Like yes. Really talk about. Look, you expect this of me, and I know, but mm -hmm. I can't give that much because otherwise I'm going to resent you, and I'm going to resent the kids. So yeah. can we work out some better, like boundaries yeah. and. You know, if she takes it badly because she was already expecting that from you, let her take it badly. Like, it's better than, again, it's better than building up resentment and then something really bad happening, like yeah. a fight or... Right. Yeah. Certainly, you know, being a couple and uh, having kids, uh, whether this couple is straight or uh, not straight, <laughs> uh, is, um, is a challenge. I mean... 
especially it's baggage like they come with baggage even pets i feel like pets from it's a the same pure, thing. previous life yes yeah, you come with that baggage right. and uh, right you didn't choose it so it already becomes a burden for you like for example this is a bit stupid but mm -hmm. you come with a cat right? yes i have a cat but you know my i'm, I'm not with my cat my your cat mom and your brother <laughs> yeah. taking care of it but i loved my cat you know i was because i had a connection with my cat i don't have a connection with your cat and it's i'm honest about it like i really Super don't honest. like have that connection with your cat so i don't feel like taking care of your cat yeah. so if you were to expect me to scoop up his poop and do feed him and do lots of things then, then i would, I would resent, resent you i would resent you too <laughs> why doesn't she do this i mean we're together and uh, why doesn't she take care of the cat yeah. and say there's a no but it's not, not our cat it is, is it's your it's cat and you have that connection with that cat exactly you chose to adopt that cat so yeah in the end by being super super honest about my feelings about the cat and my boundaries maybe you took it badly mm -hmm. in the first moment mm -hmm. when i was telling you these things um but now you know me and exactly. you know where my limits are exactly and i can comfortably coexist with your cat because yes. i know you don't expect me to take care of him or anything yeah yeah this letter indeed uh, you know raises the topic another topic which is exactly uh when uh, you know two people come together and one of them comes with uh, a lot of baggage it can mm -hmm. be a pet it can be a baby mm -hmm. you know so um it can be a mother or yeah. a father it can be a parent that is uh, you <laughs> know needy or like or invalid or somebody you know that depends uh, on, on yeah. their kids to survive any dependent no, any dependent yeah. basically exactly yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Maybe it's, you're going to have a couple of really uncomfortable conversations, but really better to have the conversations beforehand than to, you know, exactly leave it like silent. And then maybe you even want to leave them you yeah. know, because there's so much expectations on you and you can't take it. Exactly. Also, like if you want to be carefree, this is your life. You can be carefree. I feel like you can even take vacations away from them if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. like travel without them if that's what you need because it is your life mm -hmm. and you have to make choices that feel good for you in mm -hmm. your life no matter what somebody expects from you yes even if you love them even if you want to be there for them you need to know your own limits and yeah. what your soul desires because you know if you yeah. don't follow that then really you're gonna not want to be with them anymore mm -hmm. so Actually, these kind of uh, situations, uh, in a way, give the the couple the opportunity to explore something which is different, a diff which is different from what is expected from two people being together. Mm -hmm. You know, two people being together, like in a natural way, they get married when they are very young, no baggage, nothing, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, do everything together. You know, they go around, they travel, and then they decide to have a baby together. So it's all together, the togetherness. That would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but uh, it's interesting because these kind of situations where two people meet and one of them comes with a lot of baggage mm -hmm. is the kind of situation that actually is offering the couple to do something different from what I described before where not everything has has to be done together together mm -hmm. but it actually uh, gives the opportunity to each individual in the couple to keep their individuality to keep their um you know their lifestyles maybe yeah. uh, at the same time coexisting you know with the other person and still feeling a lot lots of love you know you know Speaking about that, like keeping your individuality, I don't know if you know this mm -hmm. because you uh, did follow us recently, but we actually sleep in separate bedrooms. Yes, and, and many people <laughs> say, wow, wow, you don't sleep in the same bed. But we love it because like, it's really about personal space and boundaries and exactly. feeling your own comfort, like putting your own yeah. comfort above the relationship exactly you know because the other day i was thinking i i woke up in my bed okay. and it's incredible so we both <laughs> sleep in a, um, a big bed like a queen size bed yeah. okay so in my bed 
Oh, I starfish. You, I yeah. <laughs> She's, okay, your bed is like a, a battle happen, a battlefield. You know, it's all the, st- all the all, pillows, the, the entire mattress, everything. If you see my bed, yeah. half of it is pristine. Yeah. I sleep in in one half. You know, wake up in the morning, the other half is pristine. I don't. There's no battlefield. Nothing. Okay. I don't know how you, you do that. You that just te- how can. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when we were sleeping on the boat, uh-huh. you know, the boat has little, little cabins. That the cabins are the bed, basically. Yeah. And I was totally smashed <laughs> against the, the, the wall of the boat, and she was all spread out. So, I, I can't help it. I mean, I can, we cannot sacrifice yeah. comfort to an idea of relationship where everything has to be done together, together, together. It's, yeah. it's, it's not... Healthy. I don't think it's healthy. Totally. And, you know, you can figure out what works for you as individual couples. You know, if it works for you to sleep in the same bed, sleep in the same bed. Maybe you want separate beds in the same room. Do that. Maybe you want separate bedrooms. Do that. Maybe you want separate apartments. Do that. Like, (laughs) do what feels good for you. Yes. And it'll make the relationship healthier. If the connection is there, you know, it's going to be there. Also, just just letting you know, like you know that royalty, we're always sleeping in separate rooms, <laughs> and you know, the working class had to stuff themselves into the same bed. So let's just let's normalize it, okay, guys? <laughs> That's awesome. We kind of veered off, but yes, it's about it's, the it's, same. Thing. It's part of it. It's yeah. part of it. It's it's keeping that individuality. Yeah, and uh, and this. It's, it's exactly in these situations where you can uh, you cannot expect uh, the normal uh, relationship style, you know, mm-hmm. where everything is done together, decided together, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I hope this helped you in some way. Um, if you guys would like to write to us, I'll put our email here and in the description. And yeah, you can send us your letter and we'll talk about it. Yes. So I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.